Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And um, in this quick uh, video, I'm gonna be going over um, some types of clinical trials. The main type is the ran randomized uh, control trials. Of course, those are the um, gold standards, but there are different types and different phases of the clinical trial. Um, many people know research as just that, um, but there's actually many different um, types and so if we categorize them and the more different ways that we categorize them then it's going to be easier for us to understand um, how to approach clinical trials and um, and e even even how to read them to begin with um, in order to uh, uh, in, in order to participate in research um, and and be able to conduct research first we have to learn how to read it um, and so um, it starts off by saying, you know, of course, uh, clinical tri uh, trials are part of clinical research and at the heart of all medical uh, clinical trials, uh, looking at new ways to prevent. So pr pr this is one big area of research, detection. This is another uh, big area of research, and a lot of AI is included in that as well, um, and treatment. Um, so... That's something that people forget, um, that there's three parts to this. Um, so if we think about clinical trials in five basic types, um, then it's easier to understand. So the natural history studies, these are really interesting uh, and important because it provides information about how disease and health progress. So the classic example that I give for this is multiple sclerosis. Um, there's a remitting, relapsing type of multiple sclerosis um, where there's going to be phases, um, there's going to be years when um, there's remission of, of the condition and then um, there's relapsing. But um, a, a similar sort of pattern can be said um, about um, cancers as well, um, certain cancers um, peak at uh, different times, uh, the, the prevalence um, peaks at uh, different um, age groups. Um, and so there can be uh, sometimes um, phases of remission. Um, and uh, so, so a lot of different chronic diseases have a long course of development. Um, so then screening trials uh, test the best way to detect certain diseases um, or health conditions. Um, so kind of in a healthy population looking for actively, sometimes passively. So if it's um, active uh, surveillance, passive surveillance is where that um, it, it comes into play. And then um, once some um, sickness does occur, the diagnostic trials determine better tests or procedures for diagnosing a particular disease or condition. So then the question is, you know, um, what are the determinants um, or, or what are the cutoff points um, which are needed um, in order to improve sensitivity, um, specificity, things like that. Um, whenever you're thinking of diagnostic, start thinking about um, these numbers. Um, uh, so then the treatment trials, of course, um, test new treatments, and this is where the um, randomized control trials come into play, new combinations of drugs, new approaches to surgery, um, um, any sort of therapy, and then quality of life trials. Those are important. Exploring measure, measuring ways to improve that comfort and quality of life of people with chronic illness. Um, so it, according to this um, source, at least, um, 64 billion global research dollars um, in industry is witnessing a transition into um, uh, emerging markets as well. Um, so it, it's, you know, everything's um, moving at a fast pace. Um, phase, differences between phase one, two, three, four, quickly. Um, phase one, um, this is a small group size. Um, it's uh, young, healthy people relatively testing for a new medicine for the first time in humans. Um, then you in phase two, you go on to a larger group. Um, typically, if it's about 500 people magnitude or, you know, in the hundreds magnitude. Um, and people affected by the disease medicine tested for the first time on a small group of patients who would be treated with the uh, uh, medicine candidate. And then phase three is in people affected by the disease in a larger group, up to thousands, new medicine is really efficacious 
and to determine position and compare with standard medicines. And then phase four, of course, is people affected by the disease, larger groups for up to thousands and patterns um, of medicine use in the community as well as the pattern of effectiveness and safety and actual use. So once implemented, this needs to be monitored as well in phase four. So that uh, sums up clinical trials and everything um, um, that is surrounding this. Um, I hope this has provided you with some further insights um, as to how um, these function. Thank you for listening.